adjective clauses. For more information, there are four charts in your textbook. We're now beginning Chapter 12. You should look at the first four charts in your textbook to get a good explanation of adjective clauses. First of all, what is a clause? A clause is a group of words with a subject and a verb. There are two kinds of clauses, independent clauses and dependent clauses. Independent clauses can stand on their own. They do not need to be attached to another clause. For instance, I like Ashley's class. What's the subject? I. What's the verb? Like. Subject, verb, and that's a complete sentence. Independent clauses are also known as sentences. Dependent clauses, on the other hand, cannot stand alone. They do not form complete sentences, but they still have a subject and a verb. For instance, because he was late. What's the subject? He. What's the verb? Was. But of course, this clause does not form a complete sentence. We would need something else in order to make it a complete sentence. For instance, we could say, I couldn't attend the party because he was late. We need an independent clause attached to it. Today, I am going to tell you about a particular kind of dependent clause, known as an adjective clause. An adjective clause is a dependent clause that acts as an adjective. So it's a group of words with a subject and a verb that collectively act as an adjective. Adjective clauses begin with relative pronouns. The most common relative pronouns are who, which, and that. For example, the student who is sitting next to me has a cold. We have an independent clause in this sentence, the student has a cold, subject, student, verb, has, but we also have an adjective clause. Notice the adjective clause as it's underlined. Who is sitting next to me? The subject of the adjective clause is who, the verb is is sitting, and all of those words together describe student. It's the student who is sitting next to me. That is an example of an adjective clause. Let's talk about different kinds of adjective clauses. We can use adjective clauses to describe people. For instance, I know a man. He is very kind. These are two independent clauses. We can say these sentences just like this, but it's a little long. It would be easier to try something else. Man and he, as you can see, refer to the same thing. The he in the second sentence is talking about man in the first sentence. So let's try this. I know a man who is very kind. In this sentence we have an adjective clause. Who is very kind. The adjective clause begins with a relative pronoun, who. Who is replacing the word he in the previous sentence. We have a subject, who, and a verb, is. And the entire adjective clause describes the noun, man. So it acts as an adjective. You could also say, I know a man that is very kind. Instead of using who, you can use that. The meaning is exactly the same. When you're Using an adjective clause to describe people, it doesn't matter if you use who or that. Both work when describing people. Adjective clauses can describe people when you have object pronouns. Do you remember object pronouns? Object pronouns are words like him, her, them, us, you, me. For instance, we have this sentence, the woman is beautiful, I love her, 
her is an object pronoun. In these two sentences, the object pronoun her refers to the woman. Now let's combine these two sentences into one sentence. The woman who I love is beautiful. Do you see what we did here? We took the second sentence, we replaced her with the relative pronoun who, we put it at the front of the clause, and it becomes our adjective clause. The woman who I love is beautiful. Who is the relative clause. The subject, excuse me, who is the relative pronoun. The subject of the adjective clause is I. The verb is love. And who I love describes the woman. When an adjective clause is used to replace an object pronoun, there are many different ways that we can write it. We could also say, the woman whom I love is beautiful. We use whom with object pronouns. Now, I put a star next to this one because I don't think that it is important for you to know whom. If you would like to know this word, you are welcome to learn it, but we don't use this word very much anymore in English, so I don't think it's important to know it. You could also say, the woman that I love is beautiful. Remember, when you're talking about people, you can use who or that. Both are the same. Or you could delete the pronoun. Why can you delete the pronoun here? You can delete the pronoun because we already have a subject and a verb. An adjective clause must always have a subject and a verb. If you don't have a subject, then you must have a relative pronoun. Let's look at some more examples. Adjective clauses can also describe things, not just people. For instance, the book is boring. It is sitting on the table. In these two sentences, it refers to the book. Now let's combine these sentences into one sentence with an adjective clause. The book which is sitting on the table is boring. Which is sitting on the table is an adjective clause which refers to the book. Which is the relative pronoun that we use when we're describing things. It's also the subject of the adjective clause. And the verb is is sitting. All of these words together describe the book. We could also say, the book that is sitting on the table is boring. Please keep in mind that we can use which or that with things. That can be used with both things and people. Another example, this one with an object pronoun. The glasses are broken. He is wearing them. In these two sentences, them refers to the glasses. Now let's combine these two sentences into one sentence with an adjective clause. The glasses which he is wearing are broken. Which he is wearing is an adjective clause describing glasses. We have a relative pronoun, which, the subject, he, the verb, is wearing, and all of those words together act as an adjective to describe the noun glasses. We could also say the glasses that he is wearing are broken. Or we could simply delete. The glasses he is wearing are broken. We can delete the relative pronoun because we have a subject and a verb. Now it's your turn. Read the following sentences. Try to combine each group of sentences into one sentence with an adjective clause. There are many possible answers for each sentence.
Let's check the answers. For the first group of sentences, I met a woman. She lives in New York. She refers to the woman. Since this is a person, we want to use who or that, and it's a subject pronoun, so we cannot delete it from the sentence. So we want to say, I met a woman who lives in New York. Who replaces she, it's the subject of the adjective clause, lives is the verb, and all of these words together describe woman. We can also say, I met a woman that lives in New York. Both sentences are correct. For the next group of sentences, the park was very pretty. I visited it yesterday. It and the park refer to the same thing. So we're talking about a thing now, not a person, so we need to use which or that. Which is going to replace it. So we say, the park which I visited yesterday was very pretty. Which is the relative pronoun. I is the subject. Visited is the verb. And all of the words together are an adjective clause that describe the park. We could also say, the park that I visited yesterday was very pretty. And finally, we can delete the relative pronoun because it was replacing an object pronoun. And so we have a subject and a verb. I visited yesterday works because we have a subject and a verb, so we don't need a relative pronoun. For more practice, please do exercise 6 on page 323, exercise 12 on page 325, and exercise 17 on page 328.